In this video, I'm going to be discussing the major shakeups going on in TNA wrestling right at the moment. Now, right first, I'm going to discuss two things that aren't rumors, then discuss a few things that might be uh, new creative switches within TNA that are at this moment that can just be best called rumors since they haven't been verified, and none, none of those changes have happened quite yet. Now, the first thing being, before I even get into the uh, two uh, creative staff members that have been released from TNA, we got to I got to discuss the uh, one thing how this might have even occurred and why it's happened. Now, I know a lot of you already know about the whole you know infamous phone call that happened on the Bubba Loves Fun show about two two and a half weeks ago on his program. And on that program, it was uh, some TNA employee that was under protection, so you couldn't understand his voice. Well, you can understand what he was saying, but his voice was on protection. And um, after and within that call, it was stated that uh, Jeff Jarrett and Karen Angle are now uh, living with each other, and um, Karen and Kurt's uh, kids. Obviously, uh, Karen has the kids, and they are moving in with Jeff Jarrett. Now, when I first heard heard that, I was like, okay, this is complete work. But now, with some of these major shakeups within TNA, and especially one of the creative departures from TNA. I don't know. This whole, you know, thing with Karen Angle and Jeff Jarrett might actually be true. But the one thing, let me state my opinion on the whole Jeff Jarrett and Karen Angle thing. That shouldn't even be no, you know, point of Jeff Jarrett losing control in TNA and Kurt Angle trying to get creative control in TNA. If that, you know, creative creative thing of him trying to, you know, use this as a power play to get more control in TNA is actually true. And the thing is, if you know, I'm pretty sure that this thing might be true now, or maybe just the timing of the creative shakeups is the reason why it's starting to look like maybe that was actually true. But the whole Jeff Jarrett and Karen Angle thing shouldn't even matter. It was outside the workplace. Um, Kurt Angle and Karen Angle were separated, and they were getting ready to have a divorce be finalized anyway, so it shouldn't matter no matter what. Um, now, obviously, some people were to say, okay, Jeff Jarrett, you know, he should have not gotten involved with Karen Angle due to the fact that he's uh, one of the uh, pretty much not, uh, he's pretty much the boss of TNA and Kurt Angle is one of his employees, and it might not be the best thing for him to get involved with, but that shouldn't matter. It's outside the workplace. It's not like, you know, Jeff Jarrett and Karen Angle were having an affair while, you know, Kurt Angle was still married to Karen Angle. Now, if that happened, yes, Jeff Jarrett would be. Um, completely at fault for that, and he, that would be a complete dick move for him to do, but you can't blame him for this, um, and the thing is, uh, Dixie Carter is trying to get uh, Jeff Jarrett's share of TNA, that's what is being reported, now as far as the departures from TNA, as far as creative, one of the major shakeups is uh, someone that's been a part of TNA since 2003, and that is Dutch Mantell, and he's been pretty much the person involved in TNA that's really, you know, with Vince Russo has really done a lot of terrible booking ideas and decisions over the years. So this is a good move for TNA to get rid of him. Now the next thing you need to do is get rid of Vince Russo. Now it's been reported, I think the other day, that Jeff Jarrett is still with the company and still is within TNA. That was reported from uh, Dave Meltzer from the Russell Observer Newsletter. He reported Jeff Jarrett still with the company, but he has a huge number of detractors within TNA, so his job might be in jeopardy, and Dixie Carter obviously is still being said she might try to get full stake within TNA, which I think if you do some things like you already got rid of Dutch Mantel, the other creative uh, person, well not creative person, but the other person that got released that kind of had close ties with Jarrett was uh, Savio Vega. He was there um, pretty much as a road agent. All he was doing was uh, helping out the uh, knockouts division after Scott Demore wasn't there anymore. And pretty much ever since then, the knockouts division has went downhill ever ever since Scott Demore. And not only Scott Demore, but Gal Kim left TNA. It's pretty much gone downhill ever since and definitely needs a completely... Uh, you know, revamp of the knockouts division and TNA as a whole. Now, get rid of, you already got rid of Dutchman, so you said you got rid of him. Jeff Jarrett, if he, I would say Jeff Jarrett, I'm actually, I don't like him on screen, but if he stays behind the scenes and he doesn't put himself over as a world champion all the time, I actually don't mind him too much. Uh, Vince Russo, I think you need to get him as far away from TNA as you can if you don't want this company to go out of business. And now it's looking like Dixie Carter actually wants to finally make some changes within TNA. Now, the one thing as far as the huge rumor within TNA, who 
uh, TNA might be interested in or who TNA might be looking at to be, you know, kind of the new head creative guy is maybe Paul Heyman. Now, his name's been thrown, thrown around backstage in TNA. Now, this right here, if Paul Heyman could come into TNA and uh, pretty much revamp the whole entire product and, you know, cut some of the talents and pretty much uh, have full range with the company, TNA probably could change, uh, turn around and probably improve and will actually not go out of business within another year or two because they keep going um, the direction they're going in right now. I don't care how much money the Carters have. If um, they keep doing this and, you know, a year or two, in a year or two, the ratings are still stagnant. They're still at 1.1, a 1.0, and aren't getting any higher, and the buy rates are plummeting. They're not going to keep throwing in money into NTNA if that's the case. So they need to make some, you know, dramatic changes within TNA. And Paul Heyman will be a guy to make, you know, the great changes within, TN, uh, within TNA. Now, he's got a few detractors in TNA as far as Dixie Carter when she's been even – uh, even thinking about maybe doing this idea or whatnot is, uh, you know, Team 3D. They were former ECW guys, and there are other former ECW guys within TNA that obviously, due to some of the uh, things Paul Heyman did, pretty much uh, being real cheap to his employees and not paying them or whatnot, obviously he has a lot of, you know, bad stories from them that they are telling Dixie Carter. But the one thing Paul Heyman has is a couple, you know, stars – Big stars within TNA. Well, one of the TNA's biggest stars, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle is a supporter of the idea of maybe bringing him in. Bobby Lashley. Um, Bobby Lashley. You know, TNA and Spike TV probably view him as a you know big name. So obviously they'll take some stake into what he thinks. And uh, Mr. Kennedy. Obviously he's not in TNA quite yet, but most likely after his 90-day non-compete clause ends in September, he's obviously going to end up in TNA, and the, that'll be a guy TNA and probably Spike TV will want to push very far, so he's got three guys right there that really help him. Sean Devari is another guy, but I wouldn't even throw him in there. Tina, he wouldn't really probably care too much what he thinks, but someone like, you know, Kurt Angle. Kurt Angle, you know, they really want to appease Kurt Angle as much as they can, pretty much let, uh, pretty much they'll do anything to please him, and if he says some good stuff about Paul Heyman, might bring him in. Now, the one thing Paul Heyman stated about this, he's even stated that the chances of this are slim to none at all due to the fact that Paul Heyman, he kind of wants to have uh, not creative, somewhat creative control for the sake that he wants to, you know, have full range and full capabilities, what he does, you know, revamp the um, product as a whole, the entering product as well, uh, put emphasis on certain things and pretty much have control of the overall creative booking out of anything in TNA and it has been stated that he even stated that he doesn't think Dixie Carter will allow him to do that. Now, if I was Dixie Carter, the way the company is going right now, it's not going to hurt getting Paul Heyman. And the one thing is, everyone stated about Paul Heyman. Paul Heyman is a very creative mind. If Paul Heyman, if he wasn't in charge of the money financing of ECW, ECW probably would have survived. That was the problem. He's a great creative genius, but as far as the finances of a company... Do not let him handle that. So if you just don't hand, let him handle any of that and you just have, have him handle creative, that would be great. And just get rid of Vince Russo as well, and maybe your company will turn around. Now, the one thing i got to ask some of y'all is, do you think it's too late for TNA to make these changes? Do you think it's a uh, you know, year or too late for TNA to try to you know revamp their product and change it around? Now, it's not really to the level where they're you know, WCW late 2000 or their last you know, three months in 2001. But they're very close to that since, you know, pretty much all the pay-per-views this year from TNA um, have either been, you know, average, piss poor, or, you know, just in, bet in between, maybe okay, maybe de uh, decent. But haven't been anything that, you know, people will be like, you got to see this pay-per-view. And even some that's been very terrible, like, you know, Victory Road or like Destination X that, you know, they had two good matches on Destination X, but the rest of the cards hurt it so bad that even those two matches were pretty good overall. They even hurt that pay-per-view, so they really need to change the overall the TNA direction they're going in. Now, the things they need to do is, uh, you know, pretty much, you know, put more emphasis on the X Division, you know, help the, make the tag team division seem like it was important back like it was in... 2004, 2005, and even 2006. Make it seem important yet again. Now, 
TNA, I will say your tag team division isn't completely terrible. It makes WWE's tag team division, uh, uh, your, your tag division definitely puts WWE's tag division to shame, but that's not really saying much. That's like saying you got three or four tag teams and WWE only has one. Obviously, the, the company has four tag teams. Or obviously going to be the better division, obviously, and uh, but they still need to improve it a little more. I would say, you know, sign maybe some guys from the independent scene and put them together as a tag team, or get someone like the Young Bucks if you can. I know they're working at Ring of Honor now, but if you want to, you know, and you know, actually push the motors to machine guns. I don't know why you haven't been doing anything with them. LAX, I don't mind the little thing you're doing right now with the singles ranks with uh, Homicide Exhibition Champion and Hernandez getting kind of a mega uh, main event type push right now. I don't really mind that, but I think they're much better as a tag team within TNA since you can do very good stuff with them. And the most machine guns, beer money, they're, they're probably one of the very best things of TNA right now. Team 3D, they're way past their prime. And um, the one thing with TNA is I know they'll say, you know, people will say, uh, well, no matter what they change it to, you know, people like me or other people will not, you know, put out money to buy the pay-per-view. Well, that's completely untrue. Um, I know uh, True Slayer, he did a video a couple days ago discussing one thing within, you know, about TNA that, uh, about the whole pay-per-views that if the product actually delivers, people will actually buy it. Now, you know, I know a lot of people get it, you know, the pay-per-views from either downloading a torrent of it or watching a stream of it. But I agree with what True Slayer said. If the product's actually good enough, if the product's so good, no matter what, you know, even if people could watch it for free, they will actually pay money for it. I mean, that's why, you know, I do it with Ring of Honor. I like Ring of Honor's product so much, which means I could watch it free, but I would much rather support it since that will obviously keep them in business. Same with TNA back in the, uh, from 2002 to 2007, up until Hard Justice 2007, that was really the uh, point within TNA that I really started, you know, losing faith with within TNA as far as what their product was. Now, late 2006, 2007, they were in early 2007, they were starting to do some things. I started, you know, questioning what kind of direction are TNA going in, but I still kind of supported them. Then they had a show like Hard Justice 2007, a really terrible show, probably easily TNA's worst pay per view of all time. Now, I know some people might argue Victory Road. Might have been worse. I don't agree with that, even though both were terrible pay-per-views. I view Hard Justice 2007 as even worse, but Victory Road is probably the closest thing we've seen probably as bad as Hard Justice since Hard Justice in August of 2007. I'll agree with that. And a pay-per-view like that, maybe stop, you know, pretty much getting TNA pay-per-views, you know, pretty much every month. You know, I have I got all the weekly pay-per-views, and up to that pay-per-view, I think maybe there's there might have been one maybe two monthly pay-per-views I even missed from TNA and I actually, you know, enjoyed the product at that point. Then that pay then that pay per view happened pretty much everything started going downhill after that. Uh kind of, you know, gave TNA a chance at Hard Justice 2008. That failed. So two back to back pay per views pretty much failed there. Then the last TNA pay per view I ever even ordered was Slam Anniversary from 2008, mainly due to the fact that I wanted to see AJ Styles and Kurt Angle really bad, and it looked like it was actually a pretty good pay-per-view. And I said that pay-per-view wasn't too bad, but you pretty much haven't got anything from TNA that makes you say, you know, you got to buy these pay-per-views. If you revamp your product, you know, put stuff on pay-per-views that people would actually go out their way with, you know, actually, you know, make your uh, knockouts division as good as it was when um, Gell and um, Amazing Kong were having their feud. If you do that, you know, make the tag division tag division as good as it was. Um, Within the early years, within TNA, you know, make the tag, make the X division seem completely different um, than anything else. Make it actually seem very important instead of just you know a throwaway you know cruiserweight title, which it's pretty much uh, represented as now. So you got to you know make that title seem important. You just got to make every title within your company seem important if you actually want to make your company seem different from WWE. Make your tag team division seem deep. Uh, make your tag division deep. Make it actually mean something, unlike WWE. Uh, you know, make your X division, make it seem like the center point within your company. Make it be one of the things that showcase why your company is different from WWE. That's the main thing TNA needs to do. And I pretty much, probably ever since I started doing videos on YouTube back in um, October, November 2007, and a lot of other people have stated, TNA, if you actually want to succeed, there's only one thing you really got to do, and that's be different from WWE. If you be different from WWE, but at the same time, be, try to be different from WWE, then kind of you, utilize these big names you got, 
like the Booker T's, the Kurt Angles, the Stings, and utilize them in a way where you kind of start, you know, building up your young stars. And that's the one thing TNA really needs to do is make themselves seem different from WWE. Put over their younger stars. Actually give them a chance, because they haven't really gave their younger stars a chance. I mean, it's a complete joke that, you know, Samoa Joe had a six-month title reign last year, and I'm probably, you know, one of some, I'm, I'm a huge fan of Samoa Joe, and I really didn't care those those whole six months he was champion. They didn't do anything. He had it for six months, but it was probably almost as important as CM Punk's first title reign or as what it meant. It didn't mean anything either one of them. And that's, you know, a complete shame that Joe had the title for six months and it didn't even, you know, mean anything. And then you need to stop having Sting go over at Bound for Glory. Hopefully we don't see that this year. Um, even though it doesn't look like Sting will go in there as World Champion and walk out. But I didn't think that the last two years, but that happened. And um, hopefully it doesn't happen this year. Hopefully we get someone like AJ Styles walking in because I felt, you know, they kind of, you know, did something good at uh, Slammiversary with kind of teasing AJ Styles would won the belt there. Because I, I would much rather see AJ Styles win it in a, you know, singles match instead of like a gimmick match like King of the Mountain, even though it would have been good for it to be that happen at that pay-per-view and not have done that whole, you know, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, Kurt Angle, Samoa Joe, Swerve, they did end of that match. Hopefully they have, like, Kurt Angle and AJ Styles at Bound for Glory. I think, you know, put them two in a main event at Bound for Glory, have AJ Styles go over, and have them go at it for, like, 30 minutes. A match like that could really showcase why you are completely different from WWE and put more emphasis on your X division, make your tag division, you know, deeper than what it is. Um, it's not bad but it needs to be a little more deeper and needs to maybe have a few more teams and utilize, you know, LAX and the Motors and Machine Guns more as a tag team instead of singles competitors, even though I like all four of singles competitors, but I think they work both teams better as tag teams than singles competitors. Now, I know in this video I kind of rambled a little bit, but I kind of, you know, had to throw out a few things as far as what I think TNA needs to do as far as all these, you know, creative decision changes within the company. Now, I'd love to see Paul Heyman come to the company. Now, I think it might be able to revamp TNA. Now, the one thing is, it might be a year or two late to do it, but um, it won't hurt TNA to make any any type of changes. And Paul Heyman is a creative genius. He could really, you know, turn TNA around. He could maybe bring TNA back to how great it was from 2002 to 2005. Even 2006 wasn't even that bad. Hell, if he could get it back to the how TNA felt what back in 2006. TNA in 2006 wasn't one of their best years, but hell, it was, it's been much better than what we've seen in 07, 08, and this year. So I'd much rather see it back to that. Now it still need a problem. All now the one thing is now TNA always have had had always has had problems putting over young talent. That's the one thing I'm not going to lie that during 2002 to 2006 they put over young talent, but they I think they did a a slightly better job with it, and even though they had guys like Kevin Nash, DDP, Jeff Jarrett, and all those guys in the main events, they made everything else within their company so great that you kind of could look away with what they did, you know, with the title that month. You know, the X Division matches were so good, the tag division was so good, and everything else was, you know, booked very good within TNA that you kind of, you know, looked away from that. Then when they started, you know, making the tag division weak and the X division not meaning what it used to be. That's when you know you kind of notice all the problems within TNA as a whole. And um, yeah, that's it for this video. I just want to come on here and talk about the major shakeups that are going on within TNA. They already got rid of Dutch Mantel, so that's a good thing. Just need to get rid of Vince Russo next. Sabio Vega. Don't know what's going to happen with the knockout division now. Is who who who's going to be in control of the knockout division? Maybe since they got someone like uh, Victoria in there, now known as Tara within TNA, uh, she's kind of a veteran as far as a women's wrestler, so they could maybe have her do it. Maybe uh, bring in Nora Greenwall, aka Molly Holly, have her uh, you know kind of train the women's wrestlers, or you know someone like um, someone like Jacqueline. I don't know if she's still within TNA or not. Um, but if she is a part of TNA, that could be someone that could kind of help out the knockout division or get someone, you know, else. That That's really not the huge thing. Savio Vega, that really doesn't matter. He's been released. But it's going to be interesting to see who's going to be in control of the knockout division because they definitely needed to have someone new in control of the knockout division because this really hasn't been nothing more than, I would say, the WWE the, uh, women's division kind of a little better, but not by that much. Um, and yeah, that's it. I, peace.